Hi, my name is Dr. Jennifer Wenzel. I'm a licensed psychologist and certified sex therapist at the Mayo Clinic. I am thrilled to be here to chat with you all today about sexual health and cancer um, and to say for sure that yes, it is important to talk about and we'll discuss why that is today. First, a couple of notes that sexual health and well being is an important aspect of life for many, many people. This does not change with a diagnosis or treatment of cancer, of course. Um, cancer treatment and sexual well being is not something that is spoken about often, um, given the fact that for many, treating the cancer and becoming cancer free um, or in remission certainly takes precedence, understandably. That being said, it's very important for patients to be able to address sexual health concerns um, at whatever point in treatment they feel like that's becoming a point of um, concern for them. And so I want to talk a little bit today about what some of the changes in sexual health might be as we go through cancer treatment um, and how we can start to talk about that with partners and with our healthcare team. First and foremost, you know, we know that human sexuality is intrinsically a biopsychosocial process. Um, this means that there can be multiple and simultaneous contributions to how a person experiences their sexual health concerns. For example, um, biological contributions might be medical diagnoses, uh, medications that somebody is taking, certain treatments or therapies that come with cancer treatment in particular. Psychologically, um, self-esteem, emotions tied to sex and sexuality, um, beliefs about one's own body, behaviors related to sex, um, all of those psychological factors can absolutely impact our sexual health and relationship health. And then socioculturally, at kind of a larger level, faith traditions, cultural backgrounds, one's ability to communicate about sex um, with their partner in an open and healthy way, and expectations about sex and sexuality all play a really important role in one's sexual health. Sexual health concerns related to a diagnosis of cancer can arise before treatment, during treatments, and even after treatment in survivorship. These are just some of the common concerns that we see around sexual intimacy and sexual health um, throughout the oncology process. So this might be lowered or loss of interest in sex or lower libido, changes to how your body experiences arousal, whether that's erectile concerns or vaginal dryness or atrophy, changes in sensitivity and the ability to achieve orgasm or climax, experiences of pain with sexual stimulation or sexual behaviors, um, entering into surgical menopause, other changes to the body that can directly or indirectly impact how you experience sex and, sex and sexuality. So things like changes in hormones, changes in how certain body parts work, damage to nerve endings, fatigue, nausea, bowel and bladder concerns, all of these overall changes might indirectly impact sexual health as well. And then of course we'd be remiss if we didn't take note of the interpersonal partner dynamics, the relationship dynamics that are involved here, right? So there can be an impact on how you and your partner experience and understand your sexual lives together during cancer treatment. For many partners who are also caretakers, navigating sex amidst cancer care can be a unique, novel, and pretty stressful experience. Um, so there might be avoidance of sexual intimacy or talking about um, sexual health and this might be kind of on top of already limited sexual health education and feeling like you maybe can't talk with your care team about what's happening around sexual health during the cancer treatment. I wanna take some time with you today in our limited time together to talk about some of the changes that might happen during cancer care. Um, and I wanna start with just some notes about safety, right? So during cancer treatment, during oncological care, even if you think that your fertility may have been impacted or periods have stopped with treatment, if you are still of a reproductive age, it's possible that you might still be able to come, become pregnant or to get someone pregnant. And so it's very important to talk with your provider about reliable birth control options. And if a pregnancy is desired, when it will be safe to try and what that process might look like for you. Other safety concerns um, revolve around chemotherapy and cancer fighting medications. So we know that some of these medications can appear in bodily fluids for up to 48 hours following treatments. 
And for some um, bodily fluids, such as bowel movements, even up to a week later. So we want to be very cautious um, and consider barrier devices and methods to protect sexual partners, particularly around chemotherapy and other cancer-fighting drugs. And last, but certainly not least, if any of the sexual activities that you are engaged in, um, whether or not you're also engaged in cancer treatment, if this activity becomes painful at any point, it's really important to stop. This is not a time to grit your teeth and push through the pain. Um, this is a really important time to consult with your medical team about safe and appropriate treatment options. Um, sexual pain is often treatable, um, but we need to make sure that our care team knows that that's happening and knows that that's a concern. A couple of notes about vulvovaginal changes that might happen with cancer treatment. So vaginal dryness and changes in the vaginal structure um, can occur with chemotherapy, radiation, um, surgical procedures. And you can see here on the right-hand side um, how much the structure of the vagina um, may change and the tissues of the vagina may change um, if we enter into uh, menopause because of cancer care or because of radiation or surgery, there are changes to the vaginal area or the vaginal tissues. Oftentimes these changes can lead to dryness, pain with vaginal penetration, whether that's sexual activity or a pelvic exam. These are really important changes to keep your, your cancer care team aware of because they're really excellent treatment options. Um, and I listed just a few here. These are things to be aware of so that you can bring back to your cancer care team and, and ask questions about and talk more about what options are, are appropriate for you. So treating vulvovaginal changes that have oftentimes negative implications for sexual health that might come in the form of an over-the-counter lubricant, vaginal moisturizer, for some folks, vaginal estrogen, depending on their medical history may be appropriate, pelvic floor physical therapy and dilator therapy to help with the muscles and tissue stretching as appropriate for folks. These are all potential options for care and very important to be aware of and have conversations with your medical team about. Penile changes um, can be significant, particularly for folks who have gone through treatment for prostate cancer, um, including radical prostatectomy. So there can be significant changes in orgasmic functioning and ejaculatory functioning. There can be changes in, in the size and shape of the penis and sensation of the penis. And also important to be aware that there are a number of potential treatment options um, so that you can speak with these about these with your care team. So this might range from something like a constriction ring or vacuum device to PDE5 inhibitors, which are medications that can help with arousal and erection, um, injection therapies, penile prosthesis surgeries, and again, pelvic floor physical therapy can be enormously helpful in helping to restore sexual functioning and health when there have been penile and genital changes in this way. Sensory changes are very, very common. Um, genital sensation changes are very common with cancer treatment, including radiation and chemotherapy. There are a number of potential treatment options for sensation changes, including exploring sexual aids, such as vibrators, um, exploring kind of body mapping procedures um, or behaviors alone or with a partner to kind of re-engage and rediscover what those sensations look like at this time. And certainly mindfulness uh, skills training can be enormously beneficial for folks who are navigating bodily changes through cancer care. Um, all three of these uh, treatment options are things that you can discuss with your care team and specifically may be useful to consult with a sexual health therapist or a sex therapist who is knowledgeable about oncology care and the role that cancer can play in shifting sexual health. I wanted to make you aware of several really excellent resources that exist out in the world around this intersection of sexual health and cancer care and treatment. Um, many of these are written by Ann Katz, who is trained as a nurse originally, but has uh, re-specialized and is now a certified sex therapist and really spe specializes in working with folks who are having sexual health changes and concerns with cancer treatment. And she has written a number of very excellent books um, that have been very helpful for patients. A couple of others, um, one of these is specific to prostate cancer. Um, all of these books you can find online fairly easily. They are great resources for both cancer patients and their partners um, that are supporting them and going through this journey in their own way. 
a few other resources here. Um, Cancer.org has a number of websites kind of within the broader website that talks about side effects um, around sexual health and cancer treatment. Uh, Willtolove.com has wonderful education um, online forums and webinars about this intersection of sexual health and cancer. And then on the right hand side here, ASEC.org and ishwish.org are two places where you can search for sexual health providers, including sex therapists and sexual medicine providers, many of whom are very knowledgeable about helping folks work through sexual health changes with cancer care. In summary, I want to really highlight the importance of comprehensive multidisciplinary care for sexual health concerns. Sexual health is an incredibly important part of your life, regardless of cancer care and treatment. And so it's very important to talk about your concerns with your cancer treatment team. Thank you.